come back to you. Can everybody hear me? I hope so. If you're here with us, um, please say hello. We'd love to know that you're here. Um, if you are on replay, then please do do uh, do hashtag replay. Um, if you've got any questions as we go through this, I will be checking in um, to try and get as many questions answered as we can. If you're on replay, please put your questions into the comments and I know that Anya will um, check in and um, answer any questions that we've got. Um, but I just wanna dive straight in. I'm so excited about this call. Um, for those of you who've been following my journey, you know that face yoga has literally transformed how I live my life. And a major part of that is through diet and nutrition. I do not eat anything that I used to eat before. I literally have transformed my diet. And Anya is um, an amazing nutrition, wellness and menopause coach who works with women over 40 to teach them how to thrive and how to live their best life, which is so um, on my wavelength. So what I want to share with you guys. So she is absolutely the most ideal person that I can have in my group today talking to you about how to be the best you you can be. Anya, welcome. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be uh, doing this uh, live in your group. And I'm so happy that we connected. And those of you who know, we even share a joint birthday, which I, I can't believe yesterday, that. that was just, which is quite amazing. <laughs> so it was yeah. meant to be. So I'm very, very happy to be in this group. And thank you for the warm welcome. Fabulous. So can we start by just... Um, knowing a little bit about your journey and how you got into all of this uh yes yeah, so i had this um moment maybe midlife crisis four years ago or so um i'm for i'm, I'm gonna be 48 uh, in february and and i wasn't quite happy with what i was doing work-wise and my uh, kids were growing up and um and i just felt a little bit uh um you know like a a, a a bit of emptiness, I think. And um, I somehow I found the book Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, which talks about positive habits to cultivate in your day. Um, things like exercise, meditation, uh, affirmation, visualization, reading, um, and so on. And that actually sparked my interest in personal development. And then um, that actually empowered me to believe that I am not too old to start something else and, and I'm good enough because very often we have all those limiting beliefs about the age, about being good enough, about five million other things be, having been conditioned uh, by society and our experience to, to actually dream a, a small. Uh, so that actually empowered me to, to start thinking about what I wanted to do. And I was already very much into um, fitness and healthy nutrition. Um, having uh, been overweight before, I have lost some weight in my 30s, not necessarily the, the right way because I was just going from one, uh, you know, one uh, from one book to another, from Rosemary Conley to Weight Watchers to uh, Atkins diet to whatever diet, you know, it's like as... Uh, do 30 something uh, 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 year old women I think we and, can all that <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> I I sort of I I really one thing that really started my um, wellness and health journey was the exercise and I have got so much into exercise that until now I I exercise every single day pretty much um, but not in a punishing way you know it could be a little bit you know depending on on my energy my uh time uh, and my inclination um i have cultivated this habit that led again to 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 healthy eating because very often we have those keystone habits and one uh, starts you know the the domino uh, uh, effect so for me the exercise empowered me to eat well and then eventually i i sort of abandoned all the diets and dieting to focus just on eating healthy uh, real foods um, 
so that it is sustainable and uh, and healthy. But the funny thing is, it just happened after my daughter was born, when I totally abandoned, you know, thinking about dieting and things and so on. So it just happened. It just fell into place by itself. So then I went to, but anyway, the, my personal development journey empowered me to think that I can start to get something, a, a, a business for myself. So I went to a yoga retreat four years ago by myself right before COVID to Thailand all the way by myself. Uh, uh, got home uh, the day before they closed the uh, uh, the uh, borders. Wow! Uh, and that actually, um, and after this yoga retreat, that actually gave me so many ideas of what I wanted to do because you know sometimes when you take yourself to a place where you have space to think. Um, I just realized, you know, I wanted to be a yoga teacher. And then after the yoga teacher, I started doing loads of different trainings, nutrition coach, holistic weight loss coach, menopause coach, uh, wellness coach. And over the last two, three years, I haven't stopped learning. To be honest, I haven't stopped learning for my whole life because I know that you are a, a great fan of lifelong learning, which I truly believe in. But yeah. all of those things just, you know, gave me the confidence in myself to start my own business. And then, you know, I've just been learning more, implementing more. And now I I, I start, I recently started basically helping other women to improve their health and wellness and so on. Fantastic. What a journey. I was just, um, I, I, I love hearing about people's journeys because, uh, especially sort of people who are on the health and wellness path because we've we've all got the same passion yeah. but we've all come at it from such different angles and 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 it's so interesting um and how we're all growing and then and then the people that you need to come into your life come into your life and you teach each other and it's just I just I just love it There's I love a lot of attraction you know. as well this is another thing that I believe in I hope you too yeah. You know, just meeting yeah. the right people and growing. And I think it's so important actually being around people, you know, when they say that there's you are the average of five people that you spend your time with and um, being in the right place, being surrounded by like people who think the same, who have the same values and so on uh, on the same journey important. helps. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They, who share the same uh, birthdays? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still can't get over that. <laughs> just... No, 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 it was meant to be. Meant to be. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, where where should we start with this? I, I do. You, you, you were talking about exercise, and I did want to ask you a question. Um, yeah. I try to exercise every day, um, but I seem to have fallen off the wagon a little bit lately um I still I still do stretching and I still try and do a little bit of yoga but I'm not doing it as I should be you know I kind of grab five minutes here and there so what is your what is your um for someone like me who wants to do it but I've kind of fallen off the wagon what is your advice to get them back into a kind of routine yeah well first of all I, I, um just to say that we have to be very sort of loving towards ourselves and there is one thing that I have noticed since I turned menopausal last year and um, is the the fact that you know we naturally lose um motivation you know what I mean it's like it's much harder it's actually one of the things that people come that women complain about as they enter peri to post, post menopause for example they lose this motivation and they struggle with you know like to keep up positive um, efforts but my advice is always, even I have sort of, you know, I can see that I'm sort of like, uh, 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 um, what's the word, not not sliding, but you know what I mean, like not doing uh, uh, as well as I was a year ago. But, you know, you ha you have to build small habits. So uh, I, I, I love this whole idea of habits, you know, you are what you repeatedly do and so on. Uh, uh, Aristotle said excellence is therefore you know habits not not anything else so but even those I would say that doing it on a regular basis so even if you have grabbed if you grab your five minutes here and there if you do it you know long enough consistently um, you know it it will build a habit I mean personally what I do is um, because you could be for example going twice having longer sessions twice or three times a, 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 a week but it's much harder to sustain it 
than than doing something every day because doing it every single day creates the momentum and you build the habit and sometimes you know it takes 21 days sometimes 66 days depending on the statistics but this is just the statistics statistics lots of books that have mentioned either 21 days or 66 days based on some uh, uh, on some uh, uh, um, research that they have done but of course it depends on the complete on the complexity of the habit uh, uh, and your motivation but i would just say that um start small so you know that's why the, the sometimes call it tiny habits uh, uh, so you you do something maybe for five to ten minutes and then gradually build upon it do a, a tracker for example i've got a um, exercise sheet on the back of my uh, on the back of my uh, the door in, in the room where i exercise and i always sort of um, track it so that actually motivates me to keep on going and uh, and i remember i think in in december i maybe lost one or two days and i was very upset about it because i could see this blank blank <laughs> space there uh, so so just do do a visual you know representation so you know they always say it's personal development books always say track if you want to to do something to see progress track it so create a little just you know a, a little spreadsheet or whatever you'll find millions of them in canva and just track it so that it, it empowers you to to continue and then you can you can see maybe start adding gradually to it uh, you can of course you know do something with friends or or in you know to commit uh, to to some form of exercise going with your friends somewhere um also, you know, a, a rewarding yourself. So, you know, let's say that uh, if you uh, you can give yourself a, a, a reward for every week of of a, a little exercise. I don't know. Maybe a week or after two weeks, you book yourself a massage or something. So, you know, like celebrating your wins um, empowers you to to keep going. Um, yeah, but but the, the, always start small. So if you really struggle, then start small. I remember um, uh, reading this book called Tiny Habits by DJ Fogg, which was a great book. And he said that, you know, he, he was recommending actually going to the gym and actually not doing the workout, but just going to the gym first time or second time. And, you know, just putting your shoes on. It just starts, you know, the process of building a habit or routine so just start small be kind to yourself track it and reward yourself i like that idea of the tracker um i think yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna go and have a look at uh, what i can do and have that on my on my wall so that and I do just... something that you enjoy you know because if, if it's if it's yeah exactly if, if it is something that you don't enjoy in terms of exercise uh, then you are less likely to to keep it uh, uh, going. So you have to find something that, that gives you pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. That that's answered my question. Um, let's let's get on to the the bit that I'm I, I'm kind of a little bit passionate about nutrition. Um, you know, we've we've all been um, we can all say that we're guilty of buying um sort of packet food and and, and things. Yeah that um because we're rushing home from work or we've got busy lives and yeah. um it's just so easy to do our food industry has um basically trained us into eating fast food at home yeah uh, pretty much so yeah. um and i and i've i obviously i've changed my diet completely i've got people around me who've seen me change my diet I talk about it and they all automatically say, well, it's so expensive to eat that way. That's how I actually went into it, thinking it was expensive to eat that way or it's so time consuming. Um, can can you um, sort of talk around those myths? Because that's what they are. They are actually myths. Um, yeah, in, yeah. So, in, so it's um, interesting, you know, what you're saying. Um, so, I mean... Uh, how expensive is it to be actually uh, uh, ill 
and you know then have to go to the doctor or, or pay uh, you know for for surgeries or something like this you know i don't have the right uh, statistic statistics with me but what is happening in the world for example it's absolutely scary it's a global epidemics of obesity and uh, diabetes and you know uh, 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 that actually on a global scale when you think about it we actually be paying more and more and more and more taxes our taxes will be going to actually to 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 treat people who have neglected uh, 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 eating well and who have not been uh, 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 looking after the bodies. I mean, I mean, you, when you think about your priorities, I, I'm sure that yours are just like mine to to uh, live a, a long and healthy uh, life. And I mean, th what is more important than nutrition? I mean, I can't even think about, you know, I mean, that's the only sort of uh, your health. Our health is our fight is the most important thing in our lives. And that's what I really believe in. And um, we only have one life. And, you know, we want to hopefully stay healthy and um, and live long in health. So, uh, first of all, you know, yes, yes, you know, maybe quality food can be more expensive. But I remember reading this book. This lady was... Uh, um, uh, um, the health habit, I think that the, the book was called, and she said that we should all become uh, qualitarians. And the importance of eating quality food matters so much. So um, yes, it might be more expensive to to pay for um, some organic foods, but you know what? You you do what you can, for example. So so first of all, we have to make sure that we eat real and processed foods. So what I mean by that is that, um, you know, stick to products which have not been processed. So eating, uh, you know, um, vegetables and, and fruit and some whole grains uh, and some nuts and seeds and healthy. If you eat meat, then, you know, healthy meat, uh, maybe dairy. But try to, for example, um, cut, um, el eliminate uh, for example, your your regular, um, for example, farmed meat or farmed dairy, which is full of antibiotics and uh, vaccinations and hormones and so on. So we want to make sure that we eat real food and you know healthy fish and uh, uh, and uh, focusing on actually balancing blood sugar levels. So I wanted to talk actually a little bit about this this strategy uh, but in terms of in terms of expensive you know you just have to look at your priorities okay it might be it might be what well, quality products might be more expensive but like for example there are certain things that I don't buy because I I don't necessarily can afford it but like for example I, I don't buy organic chicken because it's, it costs 21 pounds but maybe I eat less of it and I buy, you know, smaller portions or every now and again, but I focus mainly on things uh, which are uh, uh, healthy and don't, don't cost a lot of money. Like, for example, beans and pulses and your vegetables, uh, um, you know, that they, they are not expensive. So, uh, uh, OK, if you're going to, to buy cereals and things like this, which are uh, sugar laden, it might be cheaper than having i don't know organic uh, eggs on uh, 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 for breakfast but you really have to prioritize your your health and your nutrition over uh, 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 because there is nothing more important you know the, the way you you uh, you know if you're going to eat rubbish food uh, uh, then you're going to be ill then you're going to lack energy uh, um, and you're gonna feel horrible and you're gonna look horrible and you're gonna end up uh, you know having um uh, you know being being overweight uh having diabetes god knows what you know heart disease i mean pretty much i mean there is i think most people are overweight and there is a huge percentage of people who are actually uh, uh obese so that is really scary you know even children in secondary school i can see in even in primary school and it scares me because as a mother of two i can see how um we are moving towards a, a, um chronic illness which is caused by eating uh, uh, the wrong foods. But uh, do you have any questions?
I'm just going to call, talk about balancing blood sugar levels. Yeah, I, was, I, 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 I don't have any questions directly at the minute, but what I was actually going to say about the chicken thing before I ask yeah. you my next really um, poignant yeah. question um, was um, chicken. Um, I, I work for um, a retailer, Marks and Spencers. I'm going to say it out there. I work for Marks and Spencers and they do a range of uh, their meat is higher welfare. So, yeah. Um, and you can actually scan the QR code on the back of the of the product, um, and it actually tells you where it's come from, how it was how it was lived. That's amazing. That kind of stuff. So, so they're really big on it. But what I found absolutely fascinating was when I changed my diet. Was I always used to buy chicken breasts, right? I didn't like yeah. chicken on the bone, chicken breasts, skinless, boneless, the whole lot, six yeah. pounds six pounds yeah. two chicken breast fillets yeah when I started my diet was encouraged to eat meat on the bone whole other conversation we'll discuss that another time because we've got yeah. so much more to cover so I started buying chicken legs yeah. three really good sized chicken legs one pound fifty yeah so it isn't more expensive <laughs> yeah yeah no no, more... no of course but I mean for example when you look at different kinds of meat for example you know your meat your beef is is absolutely um, uh, uh, um uh, if you buy organic beef it's actually not much more expensive so i always buy organic beef i buy organic eggs i try to buy organic dairy um uh, uh, with chicken i mean i don't personally eat much chicken but uh, um every now and again i buy a small portion of uh, uh, of organic um, chicken thighs, but, uh, uh, you know, like I don't often buy a, a 20 pounds worth of chicken. That's, I have to admit that, yeah, yeah, but just smaller portions. Like I focus on eating better quality foods, but less often. So, you know, you don't have to be eating meat all the time anyway. Oh. Uh, 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 have your beans and pulses and uh, uh, organic to tofu and so on, which is actually quite good for postmenopausal women because of the uh, phytoestrogens like uh, estrogen mimicking substances organic tofu but it has to be organic so definitely focus on the whole uh, uh, on un unprocessed foods and the worst foods uh, to to eat in my opinion uh, uh, are those cereals you know i think that breakfast is your most important uh, meal i mean you don't have to have breakfast I, I don't actually necessarily advocate having breakfast because you can have a, a, a brunch instead you know if you practice intermittent fasting but having things like patis like croissants and and uh, uh, orange juice uh, processed orange juice and and cereals and things like this are definitely something you want to avoid in terms of having a, a healthy breakfast uh, uh, is much better to focus on for example eggs which are really healthy uh, uh, organic or, or free range eggs with some fiber so you know have it with, with spinach with some tomatoes maybe a, a slice or half of a slice of a of a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, whole grain sourdough bread if you eat bread uh, um, or having for example organic um, natural yogurt but protein rich because that's one of the most important strategies for nutrition strat strategies for women over 40 is to have sufficient uh, amounts of protein because um, protein keeps us sated it is absolutely necessary for for uh, uh, for uh, rebuilding and repairing cells in our body and as we get older over the age of uh, 40 especially but you know we begin to lose muscle so that actually starts from the age of 30 but rapidly progresses over after our menopause we begin to lose muscle mass which is uh, uh, our most metabolically uh, active tissue um so in order to uh, 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 just losing so, you little... know that is one of the reasons but anyway so we want to uh, up our protein intake oh sorry it says yeah i often have this unstable connection problem which has not been resolved so far 
All right, but yes, we want to increase our protein intake. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay. So we want to, so for example, um, over 40, we want to increase protein intake. The, the general recommendation for, for uh, to avoid any deficiencies for, for general population is 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So you can sort of calculate it, but in peritopause menopause, it is between 1.2 onwards, depending on wh whose doctor's advice you want to take uh, into consideration. But because we uh, lose bone density, we lose muscle mass, we want to um, increase our protein intake. So whenever you, um, so when you create a meal, you should base your, your meal around your protein intake. So for example, you have your chicken breast, or, or let's say a, a um, salmon, um, then have it with with loads of vegetables, and then a very small portion of 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 starchy carbohydrates. So that's one of the uh, uh, problems. One of the things that um, that one of the problems that women over forty have. They we have to cut down on on starchy carbohydrates. So ideally you would be avoiding things like uh, 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 you want to eliminate uh, um, things like white potatoes, white rice, um, pasta, bread, and so on, and instead use whole grain versions. So for example, a small portion of quinoa, small portion of brown rice, maybe instead of normal potatoes, have some sweet potatoes, which have got lower glycemic index, so they don't cause as much uh, um, blood sugar uh, uh, um, roller coasters. Um, and we really want to focus on a lot of fiber, which is great for our digestion, for our to prevent any health conditions, heart problems, uh, to keep you sated as well. So, so if you were to design an ideal plate, you would have a quarter of your plate a source of protein. If you do not eat meat, you can have something else. You could have some organic tofu, or you could have beans or pulses because they also have a lot of fiber as well as having some uh, uh, protein. Um, so. Um, almost half of your plate would be your uh, leafy greens, or sorry, your 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 low glycemic uh, uh, vegetables. So so things so so non non starchy non starchy vegetables. Then uh, 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 you would have a palm sized uh, um, source of of protein. For example, uh, some chicken or, or some some uh, um, salmon or some beef for example, or vegetarian sources, you would have a small portion of healthy fats because fats are very, very important for, um, for, um, for our heart, for our mood, for, uh, for building uh, hormones which, uh, and, and, helping them, um, uh, and helping them work optimally. And that is one of the problems that, you know, we grew up I'm sure you too, Jackie, uh, in the time when we were told that fat is the enemy and have cereal instead. So that was actually one of the reasons behind this global uh, epi epidemics of obesity all over the world, uh, because we just switched to eating grains and cereals. Uh, sorry, let me just turn this off. Um, so rather than um, sorry, let me just close this. So rather than having uh, rather than having um, whole foods, we we've been conditioned uh, to eat cereals, breads, uh, uh, you know, Just. I don't know whatever uh, croissants for breakfast, bagels that kind of processed foods, which, you know, just make us fat and inflamed and unhealthy. That's what they do. So, uh, I mean, and a breakfast is the worst one, actually. Definitely. I to totally agree with you there. But this moves us nicely into um, a subject that is really, really quite um, strong in my heart. And I know that it is in yours is sugar. Um. I was, uh, and I have been all of my life, 
addicted to sugar. I have the biggest sweet tooth in the world. So it has been the biggest thing I have had to overcome. Um, and I now very, very rarely eat anything with sugar in at all. Um, and I had a few little thing treats over Christmas because it was Christmas. And I'm now having to go through the whole weaning myself off system thing thing again because it is that addictive two two little chocolates and I'm kind of now craving sugar all over the place so I, I know that you wanted to talk about this today so can you um speak to the evils of sugar please <laughs> uh, absolutely yes so so there's actually uh, sugar is the the the, the worst a uh, uh, culprit behind our health problems and you know our weight gain and um, we associate sugar with with you know sweets because of course you know you have sugar in uh, uh, in in sweets and chocolates and uh, uh, and confectionery and so on but you know we have uh, we have this sugar has been um sugar has um uh, has been added you know to all other products which we are unaware of so uh, sugar for example is in in sauces you know so in pasta sauces if you buy ready made so that's why it's so important to cook from scratch and actually do not buy processed foods because we don't even know what what happens if so what they put in them so for example things like ketchups uh, 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 tomato sauces, um, ready-made tomato sauce, sauces, condiments, um, and uh, um, yes, and all, all sorts of things. But ready-made meals have got loads of sugar. So, so you we really have to learn to um, to read the labels. So, I I always say cook from scratch, but there are certain things that you can buy, you know, like uh, uh, um, let's say that, you know, you don't have time or, or you whatever. There is a situation where you have to rely on a ready made meal or something, but learn to read label. And very often, you know, most ready made meals, they will have hidden sugar and the sugar can be. Um, you know, the, the, under the name of syrups and molasses and whenever you see something that has OSE uh, uh, at the end, it is a form of um, of sugar. So you really have to learn to um, to uh, read the labels and realize that, you know, there are many, many products on the market, even things like baked beans and so on. Um, and uh, so, so well, well, if you do buy baked beans, if you buy ready-made sauces, which which hopefully you do not buy ready-made <laughs> pasta sauces because you can easily make your own. But check how much sugar, because sh we definitely should be avoiding things like this because they are covered with, in sugar. Obviously, sugar drinks uh, to be avoided. Uh, cereals are absolutely killers. That's why one thing that, you know, I always say do not have cereals and do not give them to your children. So uh, my 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 children said that we are the only people, my son said, oh, I'm the, the only person in my class that doesn't have uh, cereal. Because that's what, you know, parents give their children uh, uh, in the morning and, uh, and make your own granola instead. It's not difficult. You have got, uh, you know, uh, uh, organic unprocessed oats, add some nuts and uh, 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 um, and seeds uh, and okay you can add some maybe uh, medjool date to 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 bind it and to sweeten it a little bit but avoid you know added sugar and be aware of how much sugar is uh, everywhere in all those ready-made uh, things but also we have to look at how our body processes starchy carbohydrates so when we eat white potato sorry white white rice our potatoes actually to some extent too but especially things like pastas and white potatoes, uh, sorry, white rice, uh, um, and uh, already processed to some extent, because for example, rice, white rice will have the outer lay, layer of, of, of grain removed so that it's easily di digested. Di I went wrong. Sorry, it's my phone constantly trying to sort of come up with some 
notifications. <laughs> so we, we want to reduce our starchy carbohydrates. So that's why I said, you know, uh, rather than having white rice, I mean, have something like quinoa, which is which has got more fiber, which has got more protein uh, or, or buckwheat uh, or, or just have some vegetables instead. You, you don't have to have starchy carbohydrates with each meal. And those starchy carbohydrates in our body get processed as sugar because we have, for example, big portion of white rice and we that gets converted into glucose, blood sugar in our blood, which then, you know, um, has to be taken out of our bloodstream by a hormone called uh, insulin. So our pancreas produces insulin, which uh, um, takes this um, glucose from our blood to our energy cells. But very often we, we have so many, we eat all day long, first of all, that's one of the problems. Uh, and we eat so many starchy carbohydrates like cereals and breads and pastas and white rice and potatoes and what have you, that we are bombarded with too much glucose and then too much insulin as well. So too much glucose and too much insulin causes inflammation and inflammation um, leads to various, you know, um, uh, health conditions. So you have to remember that sugar is not just a chocolate, but it's also white rice. And 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 we really have to cut down starchy carbohydrates and eliminate uh, uh, sweets. I do, you know, I have to admit here, I, I have a problem with sugar too, you know. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, we have, we have been so ingrained, you know, like raised. In fact, you know, your your something sweet is a reward for being a good child and so on. And we have been conditioned and to 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 rely on 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 sugar and uh, and so on and sweet things. And but I mean cereals. I mean these are just killers, absolutely killers. You know, they've got sometimes some some of those cereals have got 17 grams of sugar, 17 percent of 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 sugar in them. So Eliminate things like this. Stick to eggs instead. <laughs> very, 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 very scary. I I recently read um, a couple of books, but I think the one that the, the first one I read blew me away was um, "Ultra Processed People" by um, Chris Van Tulliken. Very good, absolutely. I I also read it within the first chapter. It's like I'm never eating ice cream unless I've made it myself again you know you know jackie this is so funny you know what i did after reading this chapter actually about ice cream i bought an ice cream maker my mum has because, got you know, <laughs> okay. i've got two kids and you know they do love ice cream and but after actually reading about you know what goes into all this all, all the rubbish that goes into uh, ice cream i actually bought a ice cream uh, uh, um maker and we use organic milk, organic whole milk, uh, with some uh, uh, single cream, and I I add maybe a third of 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 the sugar recommendation in the recipe that it came with, and it's still you know sweet. And okay, maybe it would be good not to have ice cream or completely, but as a treat, sometimes the kids have it, uh, and you know. I made mine with cream, coconut, coconut milk. Um... And then, because I I don't have um I use Yacon syrup, um Yacon syrup and stevia are my sweeteners of choice. So no, I, and that's the best only, ones, the best I, ones. I only sweeten with those, so um it doesn't come out as sweet as as the yeah. stuff in the shops. But my goodness, the difference in having sort of homemade ice cream. But no, our, our next you know what? Making homemade bread. <laughs> you're doing you know what you're doing the the ice cream and as i would love to do to do it because i once did i love coconut cream i love it my kids have this sensor you know as soon as i start you know smuggling in now mommy be, uh, i added once coconut sugar to the ice cream and they didn't touch it so so <laughs> but but actually last time we didn't have sugar uh, because we don't we, we don't really use sugar anyway uh, and and I actually added stevia to the ice cream and they did, did eat them so you know stevia actually for those who don't know is a natural sweetener 
that comes from from gro grounded leaves. I was in Thailand in September running my yoga retreat and it was the first time when I actually saw, we went to this organic farm uh, um, and they, they they were growing stevia. Oh, brilliant. Nice to see. But yeah, I, I, it's, it, it's um, I, what I found is that I, I actually, I love to cook, but I'd stopped cooking. But this you know, changing my diet this way has made me so adventurous with food and cooking and, yes. and stuff. So, um, you inspired me to 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 buy this. Uh, yeah, you can, you yeah, can, you can. Syrup. Uh, because uh, I've heard of it uh, uh, so, in so many different sort of you know trainings and so <laughs> what have you. I haven't actually bought it myself, but I I, I use stevia. But I, I I'm going to give it a try because I've heard. Very, very One positive thing about, about yakon syrup as well is that it's a prebiotic, so it's absolutely brilliant for the gut as well as being yeah. a glycemic index of one. So yeah. you know, it, it it's it's really good all round. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. You touched on intermittent fasting. I know we're we're kind of cracking through time, but um, yeah. intermittent fasting has been something that's been has has made a huge difference. I did. I I. I knew I ate a lot, but I actually realized that I actually never stopped eating at all. There was always something popping in my mouth. Be, you know, at, at work we have chocolates and then there's cakes up in the, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I was constantly popping something into my mouth all day long. And it's kind of, oh, well, it's only one, but then that one turns yeah. into another one. So you never actually stop you know a lot of us don't actually ever stop eating um yes so i so fasting, agree yeah intermittent fasting seemed like something that was going to be absolutely impossible to me um yeah. but i i feel so much better for doing it um you know I, that that's one of the real significant things um that that i've embraced you know i kind of plan my, my breaks have to be at work have to be planned around when my last meal was and so on yeah. and so forth so that I can try and stay in this intermittent fasting cycle so um for that there must be I think everybody's heard of it but um I you know don't know that everybody knows about it so can you just talk a little bit about intermittent fasting and how powerful it is for our health uh, yes, yeah, so basically intermittent fasting is is having a, a fasting window. Um, so um, so yeah, n not as you said that we constantly graze and eat all day long, even until very late at night. So intermittent fasting is is having your food in a, a, a um, designated time uh, time slot, and you normally would start with having 12 hours uh, window so i would i would say that you know not eating for 12 hours is the minimum for your for your good health so for example if your last meal is at, at 7 p.m you would not have uh, anything until 7 a.m which is a, a baseline uh, but very often you know we people just graze until 10 p.m you know they have whatever snack here snack there and they just never give their bodies a chance to 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 digest to recover because when your body is effectively when you eat until 10 p.m or, or or 11 p.m then then go to bed rather than for your body to regenerate to repair to 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 use this energy to for all those amazing functions you know that our bodies do you know improving you know like working on our memories and cogn cognitive function and immunity and what have you our body is effectively digesting food half of the night uh, which is not uh, uh, the optimal use of, of our body so anyway the, the we start with a 12 hour fasting window and then we can increase the the fasting window from there so there are different school schools of thoughts um, i think that the most um the most popular is non eating for fasting for 16 hours and then eating your all your food in the space of eight uh, of eight hours so you know again you you start small so you start with your 12 hours fasting and then you can increase to to 16 hours fasting eight hours eating and 
So we have also been conditioned to believe that, you know, we have to have breakfast first thing in the morning or early in the morning. And, you know, it, it really doesn't have to be. So, you know, while your your first meal of the day matters probably the most, it doesn't have to be at seven o'clock. It doesn't have to be at nine o'clock. It could be a brunch at 12 o'clock. I mean, personally, I'm I'm still on the way to 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 do the 18 16, sorry, 16, 8, intermittent fasting. I normally have, uh, I normally finish eating by 6.37 and then I have my breakfast at nine o'clock and that suits me. So I've got, uh, let's say, 14, 10, because that, that works for, for me because I wake up at six or 6.30 and I exercise in the morning. And, you know, uh, if I wake up at 6.30 or six, you know, at nine o'clock, I am already, you know, up for a few hours. I've exercised, so that that works for me. I mean, maybe later on, I try to extend. I have done it a few times. I'm sort of on the way, on the way. But the benefits of of of, of fasting, are obviously balancing your blood sugar levels, which is, very important so that, that avoids all, all this sort of you know uh, uh, um, energy crashes and uh, and feeling tired and uh, craving uh, uh, the wrong kind of foods especially sweets and carbohydrates it is great for longevity so there is lots of research to say that you know it uh, it it, uh, it prolongs it's great for our health and lifespan. You know, it's great for longevity. Uh, it helps our body to regenerate. Um, uh, you have increased energy, and loads of people have commented on on having loads of energy when they when they begin to fast. Um, but you also have to be careful because you know if you have some sort of uh, adrenal issues, adrenal fatigue, um, which most women have, you know, like too much stress, maybe going too much it might not be necessarily good for you, like, you know, over over 40. But I think that we're talking about like like fasting as in, you know, some people do fasting for a few days or something like this. So I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't, I don't know much about that. But, you know, I, generally I would say that for women um, uh, who are overwhelmed, stressed and so on, you know, getting to, 16 slash 8 intermittent fasting pattern is is the right thing not going beyond so i run twice a year or a few times a year i run eight week holistic weight loss program for women and the first time i ran it in may last year i had a few ladies and one of the um one of the uh guidelines of the program um was intermittent fasting so i said you know you let's start with 12 hours and then you can um, you know, increase it. And one of my ladies uh, really, really took to it so much. Um, I think she was going beyond a, a, a 16, eight intermittent fasting. I was a bit worried because I was like, but she's lost. She lost a, a stone in eight weeks. And that yeah. was, you know, just by switching her diet. There was no calorie counting, uh, no, you know, portion control I mean you know obviously I give gui guidelines because we don't want to be overeating but by imp implement implementing intermittent fasting eating real foods and creating balanced meals because I always talk about the importance of balanced meals so balanced meal is a meal that has got healthy protein a small portion of healthy fats um uh, half of the plate, more or less, or, or slightly less, you know, is your, you know, nutrient dense fiber, you know, fiber rich vit, uh, vegetables, and then a small portion of maybe a sort of like a half a cup size of of quinoa or brown rice or or, or something like this. Yes, if, if that's what you want, you can you can have a, a sweet potato instead, for example, or or, or butternut. Uh, uh, um, you know noodles so um so yes you can achieve great results by eating uh, you know a balanced uh, uh, unprocessed homemade meals and you know intermittent fasting that's a great combination i think I so think... what's actually what's your uh, uh so what do you do what's your pattern i, I i'm kind of i i on my days off I'm yeah 16 8 yeah definitely 16 8 because i only do two meals 
yeah oh my, amazing yeah um but when I'm at work um I always think I'm never going to get to lunchtime if I don't have something so I usually yeah. have um either an omelet which is a couple of eggs with some spinach um That's perfect absolutely perfect breakfast or, yes. or um I also make a coconut chia pudding as well which um and you don't need that you really don't need a lot of that that is so filling absolutely um, so I'll either depending on what time I've got um yeah. I'll either have eggs or the chia pudding just to yeah. Just because it's a psychological thing. Yeah. So I'm kind of a 14-8 on work days and a 16-8 on my days off. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, yeah. No, no, no. So the 14-10, that's similar that for me. But but I just also wanted to add one thing because we, we've talked about the fasting window, for, for example, from between 7 and 7 uh, or, or longer. But I just also wanted to say that it's also important that we stick to you know that our meals are um uh, you know that, that there is uh, time in between our meals because we just one of the biggest problems uh, apart from eating you know uh, like uh, processed foods laden with sugar and trans fats and what have you is this constant snacking that is such a uh, 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 this is a habit that we have developed over the last, I don't know, 20 years. We never used to. Like I read somewhere recently that, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, we would just have three meals and we would not be snacking all the time. And you have to remember, uh, I mean, every, we have to remember that whenever we eat something, we, especially carbohydrates, we, um, they get... Um, transferred sorry the, tr not the transferred I'm, I'm missing a word main, main you know converted into glucose yeah so this glucose uh, uh, then has to be taken out of our the sugar out of our our out of our bloodstream into energy cells by the insulin but ins insulin effectively the hormone that, that is produced by pancreas that takes the glucose and transports it into our bloodstream is called fat storage uh, uh, hormone. So the more insulin in the body, the more fat it will store unless you burn it off. And most people just constantly eat. There is a constant surge of glucose, uh, uh, too much insulin. Sometimes they stop, you know, it's you get into this insulin resistance where, where it stops working properly. And, and then, you know, you start... Uh, uh, um, you know, storing fat because you don't burn this off. So whenever we're eating something, we don't give our bodies the chance to start burning fat for energy. So as hunters gatherers, we used to be, uh, we used to eat, we used to have prolonged. Of the, so the internet and intermittent fasting is actually based on our hunter gatherers days when we would eat go without food for ages and then you know we were able to switch uh, from burning glucose to burning fat so if you were not having food you were not dying you were basically your body would tap into your fat resource reserves in the body and use this fat as energy and now we have uh almost lost this ability because we constantly rely on carbohydrates to provide us uh, glucose rather than being able to 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 use our body fat for energy so you know um, i believe well, some some well it depends but it's around four to five hours when you don't eat something then your body begins to burn fat your body fat for energy so that's why we don't want to be uh, uh, snacking all day long because we never give our bodies to a chance to start burning fat rather than you know for energy so that's really important not to stop snacking and it it is a habit and you know we all have it you know i'm not perfect um but i do try and you know it's it's not sometimes Sometimes it's a mindless thing. Sometimes I catch, I catch myself, you know, <laughs> about to eat something and I'm looking at Ketchy, hold on, why am I, you know, about to eat something? And I just pause it. So actually cultivating mindfulness. That's why meditation actually sometimes helps, you know, as we become more mindful, um, as we practice meditation, practice mindfulness, we begin, uh, um, we begin to 
of our habits. So, you know, change starts with awareness. So you really have to, you know, uh, um, become aware of your habits, of your triggers. Why am I eating? Am I bored? Do I crave company? Am I sad? Am I tired? And then address those kind of, you know, issues. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 one of the things I learned was basically I am allowed one hour for my meal, right? And I can eat. And and if I eat mindfully within that hour, you probably only um, you don't need the whole hour, but yeah. you can basically as long as it's it's sort of what we've talked about whole processed foods, uh, unprocessed foods. I mean, sorry, um, you can eat what you can, but but when you eat when you eat that way, you don't actually need to eat that much. You get fuller far quicker. Um, yeah, you're actually eating food that's nourishing you yeah. so you get fuller quicker so you never need an hour I just kind yeah. of give myself an hour before I, I then sort of start my next intermittent bit um but I, I'm never hungry between yeah me. but it's very interesting because you've touched upon a, an interesting thing because first of all you know, uh, uh, you've talked about mindful eating, and that is one of the very important strategies, actually, for health and longevity and so on. So we normally just shove food. Um, you know, I'm a very sort of type, uh, 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 hyperactive type A personality. And over the last maybe two years, since I've, you know, uh, became a yoga teacher, became more into mindfulness and meditation, I've definitely sort of have incorporated some more positive habits in, in general. And one of the things is that, you know, I always say that, you know, there's definitely no distractions when eating, um, you know, no uh, you you have to be eating slowly, which is what exactly what you're doing. Uh, so you become you you start eating slowly, mindfully, um, you know, focusing on the taste and texture, giving yourself enough time without distraction. So that's one of the problems that most women uh, and people in general uh, um, have is you know the constant distractions. People eat their sandwich, uh, you know, uh, in their lap watching whatever or, or sitting on the phone so we have to uh, you know start you know create this uh, ritual that you know our food has to be eaten slowly without distractions at the table uh, without any background noises what have you all eaten uh, uh, you know with other people uh, to be enjoyed so that is also very important uh, because also when we when we eat especially carbohydrates rich foods it takes around 20 minutes for our brain to to um to get the signal that we are full so you know when we sort of eat quickly after 10 minutes we finished and then we haven't even registered that we have eaten and therefore we we think we're still hungry so that leads to overeating uh, which is a very common thing and it works slightly, it works different with uh, um, fats and protein. That's why they have to be included in, in every single meal because we get this satiety signal, you know, within five minutes or something. And and you just mentioned about, you know, like never being hungry, but because when you eat nutrient rich foods and enough of them, then we should get the signal to our, you know, to our body that we have eaten the right foods and we are sated so for example if you your your stomach has got what, what we call nutrient and stretch re receptors so you have to eat enough food in the sense you know like five you know five nuts will not you know create a feeling of satiety but you don't actually need that much food we have been conditioned to overeat because the size, this, the size of your fist is the size of your stomach. And I mean, we probably eat the equivalent of three of those fists with every meal. So we don't actually need it. So if you eat slowly, if you eat a lot of fiber, if you eat foods that are nutrient dense, our, our body knows that we have eaten, that we are sated. If you eat 
burgers and fried chips or cereals, we're going to be eating and eating and eating because we are not getting the nutrients that our body needs. And therefore, we just don't have this, you know, a, a sense of satiety that will lead us to overeating. Brilliant. Just, is there anything that uh, I haven't asked you? <laughs> oh, you know, when you've asked me many questions, you know, I could be talking for forever, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but I think that we have covered the most important things. And obviously you, we are both passionate about uh, 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 eating real foods and what you put on our, I think that all of this could be summed in that, you know, with you are what you eat, mm. you are what your food eats, because it's also important, you know, if you eat a, a, a farmed meat that is full of hormones and antibiotics uh, and and uh, fed on genetically modified corn, you know, you are going to absor absorb it too. And the third thing is you are what you put on your skin, as it, which is something that is even closer to your heart. <laughs> so I think this is really important to 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 remember and and. You know, there is never, you know, I, I can, like, we have to, when, when we, you know, we spend, we all tight, like money tight a little bit at the moment, you know, it's the cost of uh, everything has increased so much, but we have to think about our priorities and our priorities always have to be our health because without your health, you have nothing. And, uh, and I feel very strongly about it. So, you know, your, your nutrition, your fitness, your well-being, you know, that they have to be, uh, uh, um, you know, prioritized. And uh, and that means also, you know, eating quality foods. Absolutely. I wrote a post yesterday um, on my personal profile. Um, was it yesterday? I don't know. I'm writing so many posts at the moment. But it's about, there's, there's a thing about um, the difference between lifespan and health span. Yeah. Um, and we've all got a life a lifespan you know we're gonna yeah. we're gonna live to whatever age we're gonna live to um but health span comes into it in how do you want to live those years right yeah. we, we spend all of our young adult lives working trying to get money saving for retirement you know and i know, I know that uh, there's some people in my lives who lived for their retirement yeah but then they they retired and 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 kind of got sick and then then you spend those retirement years constantly going to the doctors exactly constantly crippled by illness you know and that's so yeah. so if you if you've saved all of your life for your retirement then how do you want to live that retirement and yeah. i know that i certainly don't want to live my retirement in, in the doctor's office every week because i've got some yeah. ache or pain and the but, only but thing... even worse you know because you will not be able to do all those wonderful things that you know you you wanted to do you know you won't be able to travel you won't be able to do anything fun with your family because you're going to be crippled by disease uh, uh, addicted to medications you know and then deteriorating uh, and then you know having the, the the terrible quality of your life so i mean you know we we almost like we should already start investing in our health in our 30s i've yeah. read a book recently which said that you know you already in your 30s your heart uh, disease your cognitive function and some sort of other major illnesses are already start to you know develop you might not have any symptoms yet but it's in your 30s that you are already sort of developing you could be developing uh, dementia you could be developing heart disease you know what i mean so we're talking about you know we should be you know investing in our health from much younger age definitely and, and, and from our 40s and above it's like you know we really have to start <laughs> buckle up the belt you know <laughs> and start and, really and and yes it might be oh my god I've got to cook from scratch or you know this and that it's too hard it's too expensive but how do you want to live the rest of your life that's yeah, the question exactly. I'm going to end on how do you want to live yeah. the rest of your life 
And, you know, just on the point of, you know, you said, you know, the, the, the cooking from scratch, you know, there are certain strategies, you know, one of the things is the batch cooking and uh, just doing like this is what I do. You know, I've got a family of four, like uh, very often on Sunday or, or some other days, you know, when I cook bolognese, for example, which I cook with organic meat and I add, I smuggle in as many vegetables as I can, including even lentils. Sometimes the kids detect them, sometimes not. But, you know, I make such a big portion that I have three meals out of it, you know, two eaten over a week, one in the freezer, for example. Or you, you do curries or you do uh, chilies or, uh, you know, you, you can prep your vegetables, make your Sunday a prep day. So very often it is recommended, you know, just take two, three hours on Sunday or whichever day you've got, which is you know, more free than other. And one of the know, best I have is my six, batch cook. my six litre slow cooker. And I just make shed loads of whatever. And it's all in, it, I, I put it all in glass jars in the freezer. And then I've got dinners, different dinners every day of the week. And amazing. So it's exactly, it's about prepping, you know, preparation, preparation. And when I go to a restaurant, you know, uh, which doesn't happen that often, I first of all always choose those which are not going to be uh, 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 unhealthy, if I can. And very often I will, you know, most of most of the time, I will check the menu in be beforehand, making sure that I know exactly. You know what, and these are the kind of things, these are the habits of, of healthy, fit people that you develop that mm -hmm. come, you know, as a, yeah, as I, a you know, that they become I, our, yeah, habits. Never, ever, ever go to a restaurant without having decided what I'm eating before I get there. I do exactly the same, exactly the same. I download menus, I check, they sometimes yeah. laugh at me, you know, but, uh, and then, you know, Actually, there is no regrets. I going to phone a restaurant to ask them what they make something with, so, you know, it's like... Yeah, you know, I recently, yesterday I went to an Italian restaurant, um, and I had a lovely Hollywood where everybody else was having, you know pizzas and pastas and whatever but you know i knew that i could have it there and and i chose it and i said i'm not going to wear the spoons which my husband said is nice and cheap i said no because last time i couldn't get any vegetables each time i go there they never have vegetables which annoys me to death so i said no we, we're gonna go somewhere else where i can have my vegetables and i can have my fish <laughs> So bringing this to an end, how can yes. people get in touch with you, my lovely? Because I know that you've got a fantastic Facebook group that is so full of valuable information. So that is a start. But how can people get in touch with you and um, just come into your world? Uh, fantastic question. Thank you, Jackie. So I will link uh, uh, under this video uh, my social links. You know, the, the, there is a, uh, a Women Who Thrive um facebook group where uh, uh, where i talk about nutrition but wellness and where we have uh, amazing guest speakers like yourself imparting knowledge in other areas which are complementary to what i do um i also do sugar shutdown challenge which is something that i would strongly recommend 21 day uh, uh, program where we um, eliminate sweets and starchy carbohydrates and that really resets your sugar cravings and gives you loads of energy and helps you lose weight so i, I will be doing this actually at the end of february uh, but i will just link everything in uh, under the, the video um and hopefully uh, i would be i would be delighted to to connect with loads of lovely ladies in your in your group yeah well, thank you so, so much for today. It has been so interesting. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the women in this group will will find it as interesting as I have. And if anybody has any questions, of course, I'm delighted to to answer them. Yeah, so sort of, I've got uh, several people who bowed in at the beginning and they've said that they're going to catch up on the replay because they were finding it so interesting. Um, Perfect. And it was a funny time I, I, because of our timings. It's a funny time of day to do it. But I know that a lot of people um, in this group sort of start watching sort of in the evening and they I, I have a really good replay rate. So, guys, jump on the fantastic. Replay. Let us know that you've watched the replay so that we know that you've you've um, 
seen it ask your questions we'll get those answered um but anya thank you so so thank much thank you for having me and i'm so happy jackie that you are as passionate about all those things as me you know so many yeah I'm it's sure, fantastic I'm you know we, i'm sure that we've got so many more conversations in us so i would like to yeah. extend an invite for you to come back at some stage and we'll talk absolutely other stuff. absolutely we'll talk skincare hey <laughs> absolutely absolutely brilliant thank you so much let and, me, let me uh, have let a good day everybody side. thank you everybody for being here and i will um see you all soon i'm gonna have to put my glass thank you i can't see what i'm doing so